What's good? Brian Tong here with the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This week, it's all about the software after Apple released the Find My AirPods feature for locating your lost earbuds in the iOS 10.3 developer beta release. Now, to show you how it works, I'll hand it off to my extremely good looking friend, Brian Tong. Thanks, Brian. All right, check this out. In the iOS 10.3 developer beta, Apple has finally added the Find My AirPods feature. Everyone kind of joked about it when they were first announced, but I'm going to show you how you use it. So the first thing that you'll want to do is go into the Find My iPhone app and open it up. Uh, we're going to assume that you've already synced your AirPods, but let's say you've used them and like you don't know where they are. Like, like where, where are they? Oh yeah, they're here. Okay, so let's just say you took them out, you put them down. Now, on the Find My iPhone app, you'll see a list of devices. Your AirPods will show up. If you want to find them, you want to click on your actual AirPods. It'll show them on a map. And then it gives you the general approximation of what area they are. Again, they connect through Bluetooth and not the cellular connection, so you can't be very super specific. But what helps is if you click on the actions, you have the option to play a sound. So I'm going to play a sound. It's going to start off soft, but get a little louder as time goes on. Can you hear that? All right, so there's that sound. You can then stop playing them. I located my AirPods, and there you go. Uh, the other caveat about this is if you have the AirPods in the case and they're closed, it actually closes off that Bluetooth connection, so you won't be able to see it. It will just show you the last known spot that you left your AirPods in the case. But that's kind of a really a quick way to show you how to find your AirPods using the developer beta. Again, this is not available to the public just yet, but it will be soon. Um, and there's your sneak peek for iOS 10.3 and find my AirPods. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right, the 10.3 beta also includes a few new tweaks. There's a new Apple ID profile option that's at the top of the settings that shows all the devices you're signed into and links to services like iCloud, the App Store, and family sharing. In the iCloud section, you now get a breakdown of how the storage is being used. In Maps, there's an icon you can use to 3D touch and expand the weather forecast and push and pop into the weather app. And iOS 10.3 beta has been updated using Apple's file system. It's their new modern file system that's optimized for flash and solid state drive storage and features stronger encryption, space sharing, and more. It replaces the over two decades old HFS Plus file system. Now this is only available for developers right now and will likely get a public beta release in the near future. And the latest Mac OS 10.12.4 developer build finally brings Night Shift to the Mac. I've been using Flux for at least a year now and it's done a great job, but Night Shift first appeared in iOS 9.3 and changes your screen from that cooler blue tint to a more yellow tint. Now at night, staring into the blue tinted light of a screen really confuses your brain to think it's still sunlight out. It can actually disrupt your natural sleep cycle, making it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. And you know, right now, a few of you just thought, I didn't know that. No kidding. I didn't know that. Well, thank you, Brian. See, I told you. Now you can use Siri to turn night shift on or off. It can be toggled in the notification center or found in the system preferences in the display section. And the rumored theater mode for the Apple Watch looks to finally be coming in watchOS 3.2. It hasn't been released yet, but Apple's notes indicate it will be part of the update. Theater mode will mute the sound of the watch and disable the raise to wake feature that turns on the Apple Watch screen with an arm movement. See, I already have the theater mode active right now. See, check it out. I call it the, uh, I haven't charged my Apple Watch because I don't always use it mode. And in more Apple Watch news, patents granted to the Big A describe how they could use a modular watch bracelet to bring more functionality to the wearable. It could range from anything to health sensors, additional power, or cameras similar to that camera watch band that I raved about. But you know what, let me just take a moment to talk about the camera watch band. I was all about it, you saw it, I told you to get on board but I reached out directly to the camera team and found out that it will only handle video messages, not a live video chat similar to FaceTime or Skype. I wanna be real with you all, so I canceled my order until they bring that real Dick Tracy type functionality because that's what I wanted and that's what will take the Apple Watch to another level. Also, in a correction from last week, many of you pointed out that I continue to call Intel's processor line Cabby Lake instead of pronouncing it correctly as KB Lake. And for that, yes, I deserve a bad apple. Hi, little boy, what's your name? JJ, buy the book. Oh, 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 oh,
hurts so bad. <laughs> hey, Tyler, you really like that, didn't you? All right, last week I asked for some of your thoughts with the new MacBook Pros because I want to include some of your real experiences on this show for others. Now, Kent Hurt says he's very happy with it. His seven hour eight battery life is great and he replaced a 2012 MacBook Pro with the new one but opted not to get the touch bar. Venus Patel loves the larger trackpad and it does everything as well as far as the student life is concerned. But Venus admits it comes with a pricey tag. Venus also asked to be featured on this episode by asking please so. Hey Venus, it worked. Now, Ron Kronovich sent a detailed email, but some of his highlights include a disappointing battery life on his 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. That's only about five to six hours, and Ron says it feels no faster than his 2015 MacBook Pro. Ron also said the touch bar seems really cool at first, but its usefulness is limited. So that's really a mix of responses, and I think a lot of you also depend on what laptop you had before you got the new one. Okay, let's end this on a high note. I like to feature the Apple Byte Nation, and I received this picture from Yang Santa Maria, who says, tell me I look bad with these. Yang, you look bad with those. But did you really take a picture of yourself inside the restroom at work, bruh? Come on. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.